Welcome to my Gaming 225 presentation. My name is James Craig and I will be presenting Jay Sarno and his contributions to the Las Vegas area. So some things you should know about Jay Sarno are called the Sarno Basics. Money, women, and ambition. He had loads of money, he was always on the casino floor. He loved the environment, loved the atmosphere. Um, women, he had plenty of women by his side. It, was, it would be rare to see Jay without a woman by his side. He had multiple mistresses, his secretary, and his wife. And ambition. He never stops dreaming big. He always had a bigger idea, a bigger plan, and that's what led to his success. So his most notable property that he opened is called Caesar's Palace. It's very well known today. And that was, uh, it wasn't actually his first project. He actually worked on three hotels in Atlanta, uh, San Francisco, and Dallas, and they were named Cabanas, uh, the Cabana Hotel. And he wanted to name Caesar's Palace uh, the Desert Cabana. And he didn't think that sounded grand enough um, for Las Vegas. And so he switched gears to uh, Caesar's Palace after he noticed a lack of theming in Las Vegas. He was tired of seeing the uh, desert theme, western theme, uh, those sort of themes. So he wanted something new and something fresh. Um, a grammar mistake is on purpose in the name Caesar's Palace and this is because he wanted, he didn't want it to be a place for one Caesar, he wanted a place to be for all Caesars. Uh, to enjoy and relax. Um, the casino is actually oval shaped and this is because he believed that guests would want to relax and stay there longer if it was oval shaped. And um, it was deemed the palace of pleasure and uh, orgy of excitement. So that was such a fun name. And the opening date was August 5th, 1966 and it was a uh, chaotic opening night. The uh, hotel rooms didn't have all their furniture they needed. As guests checked in, uh, the furniture for the rooms would be taken up with them. And so it was very chaotic. The casino didn't have enough money to pay potentially winning players, and this is required. So if the winning players wanted to cash out, the casino couldn't pay them and they'd be shut down. So this is Caesar's Palace when it opened, 1966. It looks very different than it does today. Um, just a real uh, eye-opener of what uh, Vegas would become. As you can see, there's nothing surrounding Las Vegas. It's just uh, this and a couple other casinos on the Strip. Um, and then this is Caesar's Palace today. There's multiple uh, hotel towers. Um, Lots of additions, it's huge. It's got a event center, the Coliseum, and then the Caesar Forum Shopping Mall. Circus Circus. Um, Jay Sarno, after the opening of Caesar's Palace, he wanted the spotlight back. Um, Caesar's Palace was nothing, was something that no one had ever you know, experienced before, and so he wanted that spotlight. He craved the spotlight. So he decided to open up a casino called Circus Circus after he noticed there was no um, family attractions in Vegas. And so he uh, opened up Circus Circus and um, he was originally gonna name it the Roman Circus, which would have been like a kid's version of Caesar's Palace, but he didn't, he wanted it to be a circus, like a circus circus, so that's, hence the name. Um, he, he almost didn't get the approval for this casino because he wanted uh, the high rollers and the families to come. And he even proposed um, topless uh, shoe shiners and um, topless waitresses. So I don't think that would have gone well in a kid's environment. So this is Circus Circus when it opened in 1968. Uh, roughly two years after the opening of Caesar's Palace. It had lots of delays, but it finally opened. Um, there are the fountains, which were later removed. Uh, it was turned into a parking lot. Um, as you can see, there's no hotel. Um, this wasn't completed until 1972, and unfortunately, this, the, ho the lack of a hotel made it difficult for Circus Circus to uh, 
get profit in. And then this is Circus, circus today. Well, like I said, the fountains were removed, the hotel tower towers were complete, and then the Adventure Dome theme park was later installed. So the rise and fall of Circus Circus. It opened October um, 18, 1968. It had many slot machines mixed in with carnival games. It had 700 uh, slot machines compared to only 200 at Caesar's Palace. Um, he never wanted anyone to go hungry. He always wanted to give people food. He wanted cheap food. Uh, just because he was a bigger guy himself and he really loved to indulge and feast. <laughs> um, everyone was a winner and this was one of the biggest problems in Circus Circus was the casino would just give out prizes like they weren't running the business. Everyone won. No one went home disappointed. So there was a lot of people coming through the door but they just couldn't keep up with um, all their debts. Uh, Sarno had several from uh, Caesar's Palace he had to repay and it just, Circus Circus was just uh, a money pit for him. Um, but it did have world-renowned circus acts. It had uh, clowns, juggling, uh, this is Tanya the Elephant, anything you could think of. There was, it was all Circus Circus. Um, it also had bad management. There were multiple uh, casino managers uh, hired and fired all within the first months of it opening. Um, and it was, it was problematic for the locals. Um, he actually charged a $2 entrance fee just to get in and see the circus acts. And back in the 1960s, you could actually use casino chips for like groceries or paying. It was a form of currency. And so when cab drivers were uh, tipped when, in this, they would have to go uh, pay the $2 and go to the casino cage just to redeem uh, the chips. And there are also lots of mob rumors about uh, surrounding the completion of Circus Circus and Caesar's Palace. And ultimately there was just chaos. There was trapeze um, artists um, going above the high rollers. It was very loud. It was hard for the serious gamblers to actually uh, gamble. So we actually sold Caesar's Palace a couple of uh, months after the opening of Circus Circus, and this was mainly for um, to p help pay for all the debts that he owed to uh, contractors and vendors at Circus Circus. Um, he sold it to a group of guys who was in the restaurant industry, and in fact, he almost sold it to the Denny's Breakfast Restaurant Group. Um, and it was a 300% return on investment, so very, very successful, and he would later regret selling this. Uh, this was his final project that he proposed. It was the Grandissimo. It was going to be the biggest, best hotel that Vegas had ever seen before. Um, a lot of people didn't think he would be able to do it, and it didn't get complete. Uh, he actually died before he actually got funding for it. And it was supposed to be a 6,000 room hotel with a huge casino. Um, he wanted a roller coaster, three pools, 16 uh, tennis courts, and a huge shopping mall. Which doesn't sound so far-fetched today because most of the uh, strip properties have these. But back then, back in the 1970s, it was just too too unheard of and so he never received funding for it. And so this is where the uh, Grandissimo is going to be. It's a little bit where Allegiant Stadium is today, a little bit uh, closer, but it was on the wrong side of town. It wasn't even on the strip and a lot of people just had their doubts and didn't believe in it. And then this is his lasting legacy on Vegas. Um, he inspired the mega resort concept today. Uh, so his pro protege, uh, Steve Wynn, Steve Wynn opened up Treasure Island and um, the Mirage, which are very heavily themed, all inspired by Mr. Sarno. Um, he introduced the innovation of progressive slots where you pay money and your money ultimately goes to the bigger uh, jackpot. Um, he made Vegas very family friendly and very 
open to everyone. And he's recognizes making Vegas what it is today. So. And then these are my references. Thank you.